Greetings, salutations. Good morning. This is uh, Sultan. This is uh, this is round uh, two uh, of uh, the game between myself. I'm currently ranked one. Axis and uh, Armand is ranked one. Allies uh, in the game. So uh, uh, I did forget to record just as I was playing, but I thought there's a lot of people who just wanted to see what the gameplay. Uh, it looked like so I'll just have to walk you through it unfortunately. I've asked Beamdom in the past whether there's any way uh, we could do it so that you can get a uh, like a screenshot uh, that's just saved in the history uh, so combat move maybe a screenshot at the end of the combat move or end of mobilization or all uh, you know or, or each round or each uh, set of moves so it'd be great if we had that option but Failing that, I'm just going to have to take you through it. Armand is a absolutely fantastic uh, player. And so uh, this game's going to be a huge uh, challenge, but I'll, I'll just tell you the strategy I've used. Uh, Armand is um, uh, very much a numbers person and he'll uh, be very precise on doing efficient battles and so forth. His strategy is, uh, strategy is probably a little more on the cautious side than mine. I, I hope to use. I'm going to have to use some of uh, some of his strengths against him, which he's a very careful player. So I'm just I'm playing a little bit more of a swashbuckler approach. Um, if you remember, um, he did a pretty average sort of West Russia attack where there was six Russian infantry left. And um, let me pull it up. So there was uh, sort of six infantry left at the end of the West Russia battle and he wiped out uh, Ukraine, leaving a tank there. Um, and six left is really borderline whether you can take Karelia, but I, but I sort of gauged, given these are cautious players, he probably wouldn't go for it, so I just took it anyway, even though he probably had a 60% chance of taking it back. But he didn't, as expected. Uh, if you remember, my first turn with Germany was pretty disastrous down here. I lost a 90%. There was a 90% chance of victory with a battleship uh, versus this cruiser, but unfortunately lost that. I also lost round 10. So not as strong in the Atlantic as I like to be. Uh, the aim is uh, to try and just dissuade UK from dropping a fleet. But Armand often waits a couple of rounds before doing that anyway. And I've got sort of five fighters, so four there and one up here, and a bomber there that's sort of held off. And so it probably looks like a drop in round three uh, is going to occur. So that probably gives me enough time. And then what I did uh, for Germany uh, is I built two artilleries, seven infantry and a bomber, which just sort of held off the fleet drop in seven <coughs> for the UK. Um, UK then came in, and this wasn't on the last video, UK did um, the standard destruction of the Baltic transport. Uh, because I lost the battle here, they were able to wipe out for free my leftover transport that was going to land in Gibraltar. So it was a bit of a disaster. It's always a disaster. Uh, you got a plan for that though. I. Um, I think it's going to be a hard uh, fought game now, but still, uh, ninety percent means ninety percent chance of victory. Just means you will lose one out of ten times at least. So, on average, um, it's not a disaster. The battleship usually gets destroyed a couple of rounds anyway. Um, they destroyed my crew. He destroyed my cruise that was there. And he destroyed, uh, did the standard sort of attack in 61. So absolute sort of meta play all the way around and ended up, but it wasn't able to drop a fleet here, held some IPCs back and he's just put a fighter in the UK and then uh, three uh, infantry. So what I sometimes do in responses to Japan is I like to see whether there's an opportunity for e either, if, if it's either an early capture of India, particularly if, particular if, particularly if uh, Russia's doing well, or there's um, a chance to um, 
if not, if, if, if India appears quite strong, we just uh, work out a bit of a pincer movement into uh, to try to time it with Germany. So we're doing a combined attack on sort of Caucasus or Moscow with, with Japan. So I purchased uh, one infantry, one tank, three transports because uh, it looked like India was vulnerable. Um, bit of an average sort of set of battles here. Uriadia, Burma. I did destroy 61. I use a battleship to do it so you don't get a hit back. It's more cost effective to use a battleship in a sea battle where uh, there's a good chance of a fire, uh, of a shot back. Anway, um, I lost two, so not great. Um, so it wasn't too bad. I lost a destroyed aircraft carrier, destroyer fighter just for one cruiser, so that was fine. And then we ended up with a with a cruiser left over, so we put those. Um, basically then stationed our, um, uh, where did I put them, to sea zone, so I'm in C zone 60. Destroyer and battleship to C zone 50. And that's to stop the counter punch to destroy, oh, you know, to stop the um, Americans and British uh, from congregating there. So it just makes it really inefficient. Not good from an IPC perspective to do that. Basically, just pushes them out of the Pacific. If you just keep some resources here to stop the punch back into uh, the Hawaiian uh, sea zone or come through. Put the three transports there. <coughs> it's playing it really safe, uh, just a slow fleet build up, uh, three transports. And he's basically pushing his uh, fleet out to, you know, just a standard kill Germany first strategy and he picks up a lot of troops and dumps them here now Armand likes to actually just get a bit of a convoy of uh, troops coming through Africa and meeting up in India so I'm not going to let him do that the aim is to just try and quickly take uh, uh, quickly take India as a result and that'll hopefully just cause a big bottleneck here for him you know, in about round six or seven but he's definitely trying to get the, uh, the this shuck happening he likes to keep America and Britain separate so he'll probably come up to here with Britain USA down here just so you're not stuck with these awkward combined uh, forces that don't attack very efficiently keeps them separate the response to that is just to try and just grab everything super quick so he just doesn't have time to get these units through because it, it does take a while. So one, two, three, four, you know, five units till they're in uh, Persia. Russia, the question mark whether was uh, whether he was going to try and take, he had about a 60% in Karelia. If he had six infantry here and built two tanks uh, here, but didn't build four and four. And just went to the standard sort of Kwangtung, Ukraine, light capture. Actually, was even able to hold on to Ukraine, uh, which is a little uh, two, two IPC bonus. Okay, so just building up here, building a really strong uh, wall in <coughs> West Russia. And I'll, I'll let you know how I'm going to try and get around that because that could be very hard to get through. Basically means that Russia can do light captures here each turn, threatening Karelia. You can't really come. Th you can't really come through there to to take Caucasus or Russia very easily, especially if he's just dumping a whole lot of uh, aircraft there from the UK, which he's sort of doing. It's up to five aircraft now. All right. So then, uh, for uh, Germany, uh, I'm going to go for a big. Uh, sort of round four punch, which means that these troops have uh, moved up now. These were the seven infantry and two artillery that I built last turn. They're going to be in round three, they're going to be in Karelia. And so if I build four tanks now in round two, they'll be there in round three as well, which just leaves a real, it, it 
the aim is to have a really good force uh, uh, in Karelia in round uh, three for a big attack in round four. And that combines with uh, a simultaneous attack here in Germany. So he's, he's in a bit of a bind. Um, he's, he's, this is probably solid with the British fighters there. But if he wants to hold India, he's got to move those fighters out, which basically means that he's going to have to retreat from West Russia. So forces got to be combined. You've got to try and combine your attacks at the same time so they can't pivot uh, fighters from one major you know, a stronghold to another. If this wasn't combined, so if I didn't have these tanks built here in round uh, two, this force wouldn't be strong enough in round, you know, four to uh, threaten West Russia. If West, if West Russia is still too strong, <coughs> I can even move into Archangel, uh, you know, move a huge stack into Archangel, which would be about, what is it, about 20 German troops, four or five artillery, plus 13 tanks, supported by about five fighters and, a, and a, possibly even a couple of bombers I could do as well. Okay, so my aim objective at this stage is to have a really strong threat on India in sort of round three, or possibly even just be able to take India. Uh, but the strong threat even in itself forces him to retreat the, uh, or move the defensive UK fighters down to India, which will leave West Russia vulnerable. Uh, he left for some reason Egypt undefended. I think he wanted, he saw the India attack coming when I was buying uh, tanks up here. He could see that it was, that's the standard thing you do because you put the tanks down here. And so he saw that and he's actually sort of pulling out here to to move into India. But I mean, I got uh, Egypt for free. He also had uh, some aim is to try and stop the uh, UK fleet drop one more turn, and he had uh, some isolated destroyers. I sent two, uh, two fighters against each, and uh, I had some lucky bouts. So I didn't lose a fighter with that, so I knocked out two destroyers which basically sort of de delays the UK fleet drop one more turn. And because I have Karelia, I can start pumping out. It's only two units, but it does make a difference. So two artilleries up there, four tanks in Germany. And then I had to build th three infantry. I didn't want to. I would like to have built another tank, but because he's got uh, a bunch of units down here, they could have... If I only had, say, two infantry, he could have possibly uh, held France strong rather than just weak. Okay. So he's not doing the fleet drop. This is the round that's just happened, so no fleet drop. Uh, he puts more into uh, he puts some more into the Ukraine. also attacks Burma. Unlucky again in the Ukraine. He must be getting very frustrated with that because he tried to attack Ukraine as well here. So it's just a disaster. Um, let's go back to it. Where was it? Tried to attack Ukraine again. Took Did take Burma though. And uh, put the troops out there. So this is probably pretty frustrating uh, for him. So here's where we sort of spring our trap a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I knock out the guy that he sent to Kuang Tong, the cheeky little attack down in there. And I do that by pulling the troops backwards, which I very rarely do. But this is the one of very few occasions where I pull troops backwards from the front line. Uh, and you'll see the reason for it. Basically, I had three transports, if you remember, in 60. Two come down here and drop off two infantry and two tanks. The two tanks can now, oh, sorry, let me take it step back a step. 
I pretty much pump everything I can into, or most things that I can apart from two transports worth into Burma, which is, um, there was one transport here, he picked up the uh, Philippines, moved them into Burma, all the big troop, uh, you know, the six or so units that were in Yunnan moved down to Burma. There's a guy here in French Indochina as well. And also a couple of troops from Japan. That gets us to four and seven, which is strong enough to hold against this stack. And then the two other transports that are in Japan uh, drop two tanks and two infantry in Yunnan. The two tanks can make it through to India on an attack next turn. And also I've moved these troops back. They can be picked up. So I've got four now units because I've moved them back to the coast. They can be picked up. And we don't need to pick up the tanks again. They can blitz through on their own steam. We can also pick up another two here next turn from one of these uh, transports. So we'll be attacking here with about 20, 27 units, maybe 29, 30 with uh, battleship bombards. <clears throat> show you what I purchased two transports and a bomber so the bomber can go here and then what will happen is this guy here is for any counter attacks so he can produce once I attack hopefully take India but if it's only a weak capture and they take it back I've got now another four units next turn in East Indies to take it right back again a bomber can assist in the attack of Japan if, I, if, I, if you hold Burma and then another transport I ordered uh, just to uh, next turn start threatening an IPC uh, hit on Hawaiian Islands. Uh, sorry, victory snipe basically. So we just do a big hit in Kuang Tang. We might as well use the fighters in the battle um, just to kill it and uh, then an attack into Burma as well with, with all the items I mentioned. Lucky because we didn't lose a troop in either of the engagements. And then up here took the Soviet territories. So now we've got a pretty good solid stack here against uh, the UK. So what are we attacking with? So 11 there, 12, 13 from East Indies, 14, 15 tanks, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, because uh, these guys moved backwards. So we're attacking with 19 already, plus, uh, plus 5, 6, 7, 8, you know, another 8 fighters, uh, then 2 battleships. So it's a pretty strong attack. He's probably going to have to, he's in a dilemma now, he's got to uh, move these fighters into there. But if he does that, it's all coordinated at the same time, so the German pressure is highest right now too. Or next turn it will be the, the very highest, when he, just when he wants to reinforce India. So it's a pincer type attack, attacking here and here at the same time, and he can't use these defensive units in both theatres. So that's where we're at at the moment, keen to see how he uh, recovers it. I suspect he's going to pull out of India, is my guess, because he's going to have to have, probably even have Russian units even in there to try and defend it. He might try for a counter attack into India, possibly. And he's, at the same time, he's got to drop a fleet here too. Um, he's getting a bit late. He needs to drop it fairly soon. So it's a lot of uh, pressure on the UK this next turn. Keen to see how it goes. Um, we'll go from there. All right, but a terrific game so far. All right, I'll show you the map just in case you want to see it. <clears throat> but a fun game so far. I suspect he's going to be starting to put a whole lot of pressure on here, but my aim is to get through and cause damage before I have to switch Germany to the defensive uh, posture. All right, Selden signing off.